Is everybody working on the recall at home? For me, recall is a position. I teach my dogs a position. A lot of trainers do this. You probably do it, I'm assuming. A lot of the other trainers over there do this as well. What we do is we teach our dogs that sitting directly in front of us, that's the come when called. It's a position. It's not just the act of coming to me, but if the dog knows this position, what do they have to do to get there? They have to come to us. So I, I personally like to start my recalls right next to the dog. So what I do is I get in front of the dog. Now, what works for me is a bowing presentation. So what I mean by that, when I have my dog in front of me, I have food in my hand and I go like this. And then I walk back, the dog will follow me and they'll go right into a sit. Who has a dog with really good food drive? All right, so I'm gonna have you try it. So everybody can watch if you don't mind all the attention on you. So get directly in front of your dog, show them that you have food and then walk backwards and do the little bow, keep your hands center and then lift up and then reward. So now we're teaching the position. You see, nicely done, that was beautiful. So we see what she did right there. I start the command right next to the dog. Anytime I'm teaching a dog a command, I don't start with the command. If I am going to add a command, I wanna make sure I can get the dog to do it first. So what I want everyone to do is just get in front of your dog, walk backwards and give them treats, stop, lift. When your dog sits, give them another treat and do it again. Start with your dog directly in front of you. Now this is a little more advanced precision obedience, but it looks really pretty when you can say come and your dog runs and sits right in front of you. So go ahead and get in front of your dogs and then walk backwards, reward your dog, keep your hands centered though. If you bring your hand out to the side, that's gonna be your dog's position. So keep it center. If you want your dog center, right? So start right next to your dog too. Yeah, yep, exactly. Good, and then stop and lift and then reward. Beautiful. And then walk back and do it again. And watch where your hand is because your dog's going off to the side because of your hand placement. So I keep it nice and center. So again, the, the little bow usually helps. So we go, oh, look at right here, right? There we go. And then stop and lift and then reward. Good, and then do another one. Little bow and then lift and reward. Bow a little less because she thought it was gonna be a down. So a little, there we go, good. And now lift. Keep your hands center though. You see how she's going to the right? Now that's fine if you don't care, right? It's all, it's all personal preference. I like them center, so I keep my hands center. And this is gonna be for the recall. I don't see why we shouldn't focus on precision even if we don't have to. If you can do precision, everything else becomes so much easier. So is your food, food motivated? Yeah. Or is it tired? Yeah, but when you, when you get home and it's, oh, also, so everyone knows, how long should a normal training session be with your dog? Yeah, like five, five minutes. 15 minutes, like max. And that's if your dog's doing a stay or something. But sessions should be really short. You come out, you work your dog. After a few minutes, you go, all done. Because what do you want? You want your dog to be like, oh my gosh, it's over already? You want them wanting to come back for more. So at home, your sessions are short because this is to teach you guys, not to teach your dog. If you're only training your dog here, you're doing yourself and your dog a disservice. Train them at home. The way that I like to do it, I train my dog in the morning for breakfast and I train them in the evening for dinner. I make them work for their meals. This is a good way to prevent our dogs from getting fat. Who has multiple people in their household that gives their dog food? Okay, so if you have multiple people in your household giving your dog food, this is what I recommend to prevent your dog from getting overweight. Take all the food and treats that your dog is allowed to have for one day and put it in one designated spot and let everybody know that's the only spot they're allowed to grab treats from. Once that's gone, the dog's done for the day. I don't care if it's over by 10 a.m. No more food the rest of the day. That way we prevent our dogs from becoming obese because we know that's not good for their health. Any questions on the come when called? Now for the actual CGC requirement, you can do this. Come on, Bobby, woo! Right, you can do that if you want. If you wanna focus on precision, I recommend doing it. Like the CGC, you could talk to your dog the entire time. For the sitting down, you could touch your dog. Like you could apply a little bit of pressure on your dog's back and that's allowed. But what I say is work on things that are gonna have long-term positive impact. Don't just think about what I need to do to pass. So working on the detail. Now with the come when called, I start right next to the dog, but as we progress, I create distance. Now there's an exercise that I love doing and this is something that people consider more advanced, but it's really not. So what I do, you can buy these cones at Home Depot. This is how I like to start teaching a recall. The reason why is when we first start teaching a stay, 
the saying that I like to keep in my mind, if you can't touch your pup, don't free them up. Why? There's a reason for it. If your dog learns every time you put him in a stay, you get 10 feet away and you call him, and you do that over and over and over again, your dog anticipates the release and breaks. If your dog learns the foundation of the stay, where the only time you can release them is when you're close enough to touch them, then they're way less likely to break. So what I do when I'm working on a recall from a distance, if it's still in the early stage, I like to teach what I call the around command. So a lot of the trainers already know this. You teach the dog to go around a cone. How do you do that? You lure them. <laughs> it's easy. You just do it over and over again. Once I know I can lure a dog around the cone, then I add the command. So I say around, so I go around, then I cue the dog. And I do that over and over and over again until I say around and the dog takes off. Now I use that to teach my come when called. So I go around, once the dog goes around, come, and I guide the dog into the come. Around, dog takes off, come, bring the dog back. So now we can work on two exercises in one, sending the dog away from us and bringing the dog back into the heel position. So like your dog's food motivator, right? Yes. Can you lure him around the cone? I want you guys to see how difficult this is. Yay, that's it, it's easy. <laughs> Keep in mind you wanna separate your commands from your physical cues. Remember, think about it as questions and answers. You're asking your dog a question, then you're providing the answer. What I used to do when I was learning to train dogs, I would walk around and I would mark just the air. I'd go, yes, yes, yes. Developing that muscle memory, down. It's way easier when the dog's not in front of you. Once a dog gets in front of you, you're like, down, ah, no, treat, got, right? So practice these things without the dog as well. If anybody has any questions, you wanna to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for listening to me run my mouth. I really appreciate it. I love dog training, so this was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys.